What's going on guys? I'm Rob. And I'm Tay. So, if you are clicking on this video for the first time, we are telling stories that we found on Reddit. We will give them credit. Mm -hmm. We are telling their stories in light of it being October. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of fun, you guys. Like it's a different switch up. We're kind of we're we're speculating on spooky stories. Mm -hmm. If you guys watched the first video, I'm not gonna spoil it. Go watch the first one. Yeah. That way you guys get the feel of it. The this first is, series is really cool. Yeah. And this is round two kind of. So more spooky stories, more fun, more Halloween vibes. Tay has not read any of these, so these mm -hmm. are kind of new to him. Yep. Which one was which, the which, which kind of makes it which makes it kind of cool though, because it like lets you speculate. So <laughs> should I read this one? I believe so. Yeah, this is okay. definitely the one. Okay, that's good. I think I really like this story. So when I was editing these stories, they uh -huh. are very lightly edited just mm -hmm. to make some sentences make sense. Mm -hmm. But I try my best not to process any of the stories. So I, although yeah. I'm not hearing it for the first time, I kind of am. Yeah, and so like these stories, you guys got to keep in mind, I mean, they're like not college written papers. So we're, <laughs> we're trying to read the stories that are like written by other, you know, there's people on the internet. So um, this story is called, wait, anything else before I start? No? No. Okay. This story is called The Encounter of the Paranormal Tour hmm. by Valpal1237. There's your credit. Uh, we'll probably put it down there somewhere as well, but by, it's Valpal1237. 1237, guys. 1237. So let's start with the background, as we always do. The Trans Algany Lunatic Asylum, formerly known as the Weston State Hospital, is a Kirkbride building that housed the mentally ill from 1864 to 1994. That's when I was born. 1994? Mm -hmm. Nice. When you were 93? Or 91. 90, 91. Yeah. I'm old. Ancient. In 2007, it was privately purchased and has become a museum slash historic location and, ghost, and a ghost hunting spot. It has a most unpleasant and dark history that I've regaled, regaled, regaled? Yeah, regaled, I believe. To thousands of people, and it pains me to be an expert on the subject. In 2021, I retired from my position as a guide and a ghost hunt event manager under severe burnout. And after all I experienced there, it solidified in my mind that paranormal things that defy rational explanation do indeed happen, and certain phenomena are absolutely real. It almost, it's almost October, and I'm feeling a little spooky. So are we. Mm -hmm, we definitely are. So here are a couple of strange things that I experienced in my time there. Mm -hmm. So this guy's been around for a while. If he's a manager, yeah. he's been doing this for a while. He's not a young guy. And so, hopefully a little bit more experience. And it's a, it's a, it's a lunatic asylum. Those things are always creepy to me. Like They're that's, extremely that's always, creepy. I mean, out of, out of cemeteries, out of any abandoned buildings, I feel like insane asylums are like my top two not to go to. And this is old, 1864. So back then, people were not friendly yeah. to. It's just because that. I think about the history of insane asylums too. Like many painful screams. That's yeah. Like so, like experiments. I don't know if that's what happened here, but I'm just saying like that's what that's why things like that give me mm -hmm. the ick. I don't. I don't. It's creepy. Yeah, it's to definitely. Me. Cre I don't know if I would you ever visit one. Should we go to one? Well, we went to the Detroit Osteopath, but that was... That's not the same, I feel like. We... I don't know. That'd be terrifying. They would have to let us know if they wanted <laughs> to do that. That'd be horrible, but... You know what would be so cool? Go ahead. Bring your own table, reading stories in the... <laughs> We're <laughs> asking for trouble. No, <laughs> yeah, bro. No. no. But... All right. Maybe. We'll see. Okay, carry on, guys. Stick with you. This is a longer story. I'm going to try my best to get through it. Here we go. It's a good story, though. One evening, while training for the job, I was on the first floor with a couple of co-workers while everyone else was touring upstairs. We were just kind of killing time, quietly observing the area. Light from the outside was coming in through the windows, casting on the inner hall's wall. In that light, I watched the perfect silhouette of a man from head to hip walk through that light from the left to right. I'm I, out. Yeah. And I'm instantly, already gone. Instantly leaving. <laughs> light. And with that much detail, instantly leaving. I said something about it, and the three of us watched as an arm and a hand moved into the light from the right side. Okay. I immediately ran into the room and began looking out, the, looking out that window for someone outside. There was no one there at that time. The realization that the ground to the bottom of the window was like seven feet. It didn't even occur to me. I will never forget the crisp, clear silhouette shape for as long as I live. For one, I would have been left. Mm -hmm. I would have been gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let that be clear. Yep. I'm not sticking around. Yep. But, okay. We would run experiments with a spirit box. It rapidly scans radio frequency and are believed to be a communication device. 
One person would use one with noise canceling earbuds. All they're able to hear is the radio static and blips from a few, few random stations. When they hear a word or phrase, they are to say it out loud, meaning, I always like this role in the experiment. This is, I don't know if you've ever seen it, it's creepy. I've never like, seen it. So I guess to put it, to give you more of a, a, a visual, one person closes their eyes or whatever, they put on headphones, noise canceling headphones, you can't hear anything, but the radio stations and all you hear is static, okay. and then you'll hear like a, a random, it scans radio frequencies and the whole thought is that ghosts can tamper with it and find the frequency, different frequencies, and they can combine those to make words or sentences. Hmm. And they'll communicate through that. It's creepy. Interesting. I never yeah. seen that. Yeah. Okay. One evening, my coworker and I ran one of these experiments in a notorious room where a murder of 1987 took place. Oh. Interesting. So the asylum had a murder in it. Okay. I don't even remember this part. For ten minutes, I sat and listened to nothing but radio static through, a spirit, through the spirit box. No blips on the radio. Nothing except <laughs> static. I was starting to get bored when I heard a woman's voice say, Evil. So I spoke up and repeated the word, Evil. Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know, my coworker is shining her flashlight in my face to get my attention. I pull, out, I pull out the earbud and she was practically frantic saying, It's time to go, time to go. She's smart. Mm -hmm. So we haul ass out of the room, down the hall, down the next hall to the center section before she would even tell me what happened. While I was hearing nothing but static, she kept hearing what sounded like someone shuffling their feet and walking around just outside the door. She said she spoke up and asked, whoever is out in the hallway, are they nice? Oh. That was when I spoke out the word and said, evil. I'm instantly leaving. Yeah, and what? keep in mind, that the person with the headphones right can't now. hear. Okay, that kind of gave me chills. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Ooh. Okay. Okay, I have headphones on and I hear static. And I'm asking, hey, it's, I hear shuffling. Yeah. Wouldn't you not tell me? I mean, he, he did immediately after yeah but the whole point is well that's okay well the thing is sometimes you don't know if they're friendly if they're not friendly there, okay if you have on the headphones right yeah. and you're here listening for static mm -hmm. there's no way if I hear shuffling of feet I'm just I'm there by myself like you don't um, hear are you nice yeah, friendly or? and then I say evil I'm instantly leaving bro I'm, that, I'm, that I'm, right there is instantly creepy yeah it's definitely freaky I don't know like that's creepy just picture that that's that's just, it's creepy i'd rather not picture it that's how do you top that <sighs> maybe cool. they can let's see in the late hours one night we figured it would be cool to see what would happen if we shut all the doors of the ward real cool <laughs> <laughs> do you see my my thing maybe, what are we doing you know okay I, okay i'm sorry guys for speculating so much i just don't <laughs> i don't get it but okay one of the doors as it was closing the knob twisted in my hand and it was forcibly pulled close I stood there for several moments, opening and closing the door, trying to replicate what happened, trying to explain it. Finally, the person with me was like, what the hell are you doing? It was so weird. I'd never felt an, an invisible force like that before. We had three people spend the night, and they had, thermal, they had thermal imaging video. They set it up, pointing down the hall where we could all watch on a tablet. We thought it would be interesting to leave a device at the far end of the hall that would alarm if the field around it was disturbed. As one of the guys walked down the hall to put it there, we could see his form on thermal imaging, clearly as a human shape in colors representing heat and warmth. When he walked by, one of, the do one of those doorways opened about one-fourth of the way down the ward. The shape of the head, neck, and shoulders, upper body, as well as the upper body, of a person and colors indicating cooler temperatures peeked out as he walked by. Nope. <clears throat> Like someone popped out of the room for a sec as he walked by to check him out. I've never seen anything like it. Won't forget it and would give my left testicle, if I had one, for a copy of that footage. <laughs> I wish we had a copy of that footage. Okay, so... <sighs> Why don't we have a copy of that footage? I don't know. So, they have a thermal image. The first guy, as an example, walks through and it's like, I'm assuming that orange showing yeah, that there's red, heat. Yeah, yellow. He walks by from one door to the other and then right behind him... A head peeks out, which is more blue, I'm assuming, which is colder temperature, just to kind of... It didn't seem evil, but it was just like looking like, hey, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. And then... <sighs> Where's the footage? Yeah, I want to see the footage. If, yeah. if, if, what's his name? Um, if Valpal1237 is out there, try to make it happen for us, man. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's, 
yeah, I don't know, man. I, I if I was there, I would. Yeah. I would be out. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. I'll end this with a story that absolutely changed me that I still don't understand. I I remember the exact night and time of these occurrences. That's how profound and unsettling they were. June 3rd and June 4th of 2017, 3.40 a.m. June 3rd, after an hour or so of hearing a female's voice, one instance even sounded like she said my name, as well as a banging around footsteps, banging around footsteps, literally running sounds on that hardwood floor towards us. I sat quietly on the floor with a group. I started to feel dizzy, lightheaded, and gross. I told myself that it was my imagination that I'd be fine. A few minutes later, I started to feel this intense burning sensation on my lower back, just to the right of my spine. Again, I told myself that it was all just my imagination. The burning sensation kept amping up, getting worse and worse. I told myself that I didn't want to be that guy and say anything in front of these people, you know? Finally, it got to the point where I had to say something. I asked my coworker with us if there was anything there. She was like, OMG. There was on my lower back, there on my lower back, just to the right side of my spine was a mark that looked like a burn or an abrasion about three to four inches long and about one inch wide. Now I've seen other such claims made by visitors of scratch marks and that and the like, often writing them off, and the marks were always gone within an hour at most. I had visible marking on my back for almost a week. My nerves there, to this very day, often feel weird sometimes chilled sometimes like my skin like a skin soreness especially when i think of the experience so was he saying a ghost burned him Maybe? scratched him burned yeah. him i mean my thing though i think is like if you're hearing voices for an hour why didn't you say anything to anybody like, yeah um what? yeah i mean i yeah trying to be open i mean that's creepy if that truly happened, like someone... Uh, there is a photo of the scratch at the end, just a heads up. A ghost burning you? A physical contact again? I've seen stuff like that on... What are those shows? You Normal know what shows? Activity shows? Yeah. yeah. Um, that Maybe. are... You know. Who knows, man? Yeah, Who, that's, I don't know. I. Uh, Let's mm-hmm. see. Moving on. June 4th. The same part of the building at the same time of night, because I can't just get enough, right? I noticed that my voice recorder ran out of memory. So I'm holding it in my right hand, using the flashlight in my left so I could see what I was doing. Suddenly I feel a burning sensation on the underside of my right arm, did a WTF moment and shifted my flashlight to it. The person beside me and I watched as three welts began to appear down my arm. Needless to say, that ish blew my mind. It is one thing to see marks like that. It is a whole ass other to watch it as it happens on your on your own skin. Like the majority of instances I've heard about, those marks were gone within 10 to 15 minutes. No lasting effects. This is similar to the other one. He just felt like yeah. his forearm this time. Maybe he's allergic to something. I don't know. That's a, you there's, no way know. I, there's, there's no way I still keep going there if I'm getting damaged. Scared would be the wrong word, but I have none to describe my mind frame around those events. I took a week off from work after it, and I tried to process it all and was nervous being in that hallway for the rest of that summer. Like I said, I still don't know what to think or believe. I've got enough stories or experiences to probably fill a book, but I'll leave you with those for now. I will add a final note about how constantly, how constantly poking around in the dark and talking about past true horrors of human experience day in and day out truly takes its toll, spiritually and emotionally. Since my resignation, my mental health and overall level of happiness has greatly improved. I used to tell people for a while afterwards that it felt like I'd gone out of a toxic relationship with that place. So I think it sounds like at the end he learned his lesson. And left. Yeah. To me, the insane asylum takes the cake. Yeah, this is a very I mean creepy story. Should we see if this this image loads of this? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Damage to his body? His welt? Uh, it shows the back. It's nothing yeah. crazy, but Man, if you don't... <laughs> he could have rubbed up against yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know. To I, be yeah. fair, but... Okay, but see, open mind, the insane asylum still has me. That's a chilling one. It's creepy, man. I and I don't one. know if it's just because it's an asylum. Well, think about it, though. Like, that, the scariness of that second person, like, telling him, we gotta go, we gotta go. Like, imagine having that. My heart would have been like, don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> and then, imagine you... That's just... So, it's scary. Yeah. You have the headphones on, I hear shuffling, are you friendly or evil? 
you say evil, evil. you gotta go. Like at that, at that point, like I'm done with. Like Why I don't do you go back though. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing I'm, at that I'm point. Done. I'm I, That's I'm done. more. De- that's for me. That's that's that. I don't know how we're gonna beat that for the day, but that's the most creepy. That, I haven't, that gave me chills. Yeah. Like I don't, and I haven't heard a creepy story in a while. No, I, I agree. I agree. So for me, that one takes the cake. I don't care. Maybe the running after, maybe the we gotta go type of thing. Him saying evil. Out and of that, all the stories, and, that is the creepiest. It's the most one. realistic though, because like, if he could only hear static, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden he says the word evil, he's responding yeah, to that person's and he didn't question. Even, that's so creepy, dude. That's yeah. like that's insane. But yeah. ah, it's you're right. Scary, I have, like, scary chills. story, man. That's creepy. The it other is. ones are kind of like I get it, but like even the graveyard one. But this one is kind of like imagine a ghost saying evil. You gotta go. It, at that point, it's not a ghost in my mind. I the think demon. I feel like it's 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 demonic. Yeah. I don't. You're instantly leaving, bro. Are you? Fr- he heard shuffling of feet. Are you friendly or evil? You say evil. Bye. You gotta go. He didn't even say that. He was just like, "Are you friendly and, and uh, evil?" I'm out of there. What? Unless I mean to debunk it, we gotta kind of do it. Unless they he could hear the other person talking over the static, but they're noise canceling. We just have to assume he couldn't. Yeah, they're noise canceling though. And so you, you, it's noise cancellation, and you hear yeah on top of that. Yeah, there's no. So way. it's unless, but like I, on those, some of those paranormal videos, like they're always like saying it kind of loud. They're like, "Are you friendly?" They're like speaking into the abyss. That's my only thing I could think of. Creepy for sure. It's yeah, I, I, I like that story a lot. Mm. Tell us what you guys think in the comments below. Yeah. Whew. Okay, time for a shorter, less scary story? Yeah. Yeah. We got this. Okay guys, to wind down, this story is called The Hat Man by the Purple or Purple Supernova. I've heard the Hat Man before. I've heard like this is a common thing. I don't really know. I've heard of the cat in the hat. <laughs> this is the hat man. <laughs> Wrong story. Okay, so I think I got a little bit of background for you. As long as I can remember, I've seen an abnormally tall, thin shadow person wearing a top hat. I've seen him inside my house, outside, at school, and even at other people's houses. Sightings include seeing him briefly peeping out from behind trees or buildings outside in broad daylight, and a couple of times while using the restroom at school, I've only seen his feet standing outside the closed stall door. Even in the light, he has no features, just pure darkness, like a black paper cut out in the shape of a person. I mostly see him inside, though. He sometimes stands behind my bedroom door and sometimes paces up and down the hallway by night by several times while passing a mirror or other reflective surfaces I can barely catch a glimpse of him following closely behind me in my reflection but when I spin around there's no one there so is he the only one who can see him I assume so yeah Mm -hmm. this isn't an everyday thing just often enough that I can't discount it as something in my eye or catching something completely normal in my peripheral vision. And another thing is, I'm not the least bit frightened by him. He doesn't seem to have a threatening aura. It's more a sense of curiosity, maybe? Hmm. You're crazy. (laughs) There's no way you see a dark, shadowy, skinny looking, dark top hat wearing person following you. Hi friends. And you're not scared. No. What? No. I've read up some of the phenomena of others seeing the hat man and many describe a dreadful feeling when they see him i've never felt that not even as a child i was just wondering how widespread encounters are with this entity and or whatever it is it has followed me to several houses whenever i've moved i'm an adult now and i've seen him here but no one else in my family has ever seen him except me i've decided to list some of the instances where i've seen him this is by no means a complete list, just a few that I can remember off the top of my head. Okay, so I, I Let's see. he's seen him since he was a kid, yeah, all the way up to an adult. It's weird. No weird feelings, he's the only person who could see him. Mm. Instance one. I clearly remember him standing against the wall behind the door in my bedroom at night. From time to time, I was still in a toddler bed. 
he would just watch me, and sometimes he would walk out of the door, up the hallway, and be gone. Other times I would fall asleep while he was standing there. So you're a toddler in your little <laughs> bed, and he's just standing there staring at you. And you weren't scared. And you weren't scared, you just fell asleep. Do you remember when you were a toddler? No, I don't, but I am i don't remember what I ate last night, so yeah. that's me. I know a lot of people do remember that, so that's one instance. The other time, I saw him outside many times as a child. I recall playing with my dog, throwing a ball towards the woods that lined our backyard. And as I watched my dog run for the ball, it would see I would see him standing at the very edge of the trees. Another instance, I was playing in my pool with a friend about five to six years in age and saw just his upper body poking around the side of my house watching me. This is like weird. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, mm, yeah. it's like it's almost grew up with this person. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Another instance. I saw him at my element, elementary school while on the swing set during recess. Again, just his upper body peering around the side of a tree. Twice, I remember using the restroom at school and seeing just his feet underneath the saw door, as if it was someone waiting for me to finish. I never heard anyone come in, and he wasn't there when I opened the door. Another time, I was passing the gym and glanced in, and he was standing there in the middle of an empty gym watching me pass by. Okay, another one. I saw him at my friend's house, standing in the doorway, watching us play with dolls. Once I came out of the bedroom at my grandmother's house, and he was standing there at the end of the hall. I see him in mirrors a lot, too. I've been laying in my bed, reading a book, and see him walk by the open bedroom door, and a few times I've come out of the bedroom and seen him standing in my daughter's room across the hall. So now he's an adult. Mm-hmm. And the last one is I specifically remember one time when I thought my daughter saw him too but she was too young to talk I had her in the bathtub and had half turned to reach for the baby shampoo behind me I saw him out of the corner of my eye and when I fully turned to face him he slowly backed out of the room without making a sound and, it was almost, and almost as if he was gliding not walking this was in the middle of the day under a bright bathroom light. My daughter's eyes followed him as well. Okay. There are many more occurrences, but this list is long enough already. He's not scary at all, and he's never tried to interact with me and touch me. This is not sleep paralysis. I was fully awake and engaging with other people during some of these instances. What do you think of that one? Who's that one guy? That... I'm trying to imagine what he looks like. You know that one? Who's that? What's, what character is that? The one, the skeleton guy in the tall black suit with the top hat with the circle skeleton head. Jack Sparrow. What's his name? Jack, Jack skeleton? skeleton. Is that him? Jack Skeleton? He doesn't have a hat. He doesn't? He's just tall and lanky. I mean, that's kind of... If you took a silhouette of it, that yeah. would be pretty accurate. With a top hat. Yeah. And he's just black. Okay, so he doesn't He doesn't feel anything. No evil. It doesn't mess with him. And it's all the way from him being a kid to an adult. Mm-hmm. Why would... I guess what I'm trying to wrap my head around is like, why would it just follow him why is he the only person seeing it why isn't it interacting is it a guardian maybe it's a guardian spirit if we believe in that stuff but i don't think so a hat man it, 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 and every other instance that he's researched there have been evil, evil scary maybe he's the crazy one why is he scared <laughs> who knows who would or be scared maybe Maybe it's playing a long game. Maybe he wants them to feel super comfortable. Maybe he's been and a kid and he's an adult Maybe now. it's going after his kid. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I don't I, know. That Creepy. story is... Creepy nonetheless. Yeah, it, it's it's um, it's an odd story. Yeah, it's odd. Remember, like we said, it's, they're odd. They may not be scary all the way, but they're odd. They're weird. It, so, yeah. I mean, if I saw, I'll tell you what, if I saw a, especially if it was outside a bathroom stall, <laughs> I wouldn't have it, man. I wouldn't like so it. So that means he had to be tall enough to look over the stall. So he saw a shoe. He said all he saw was shoe. Yeah, but he said, see, now that doesn't make sense. Yeah, see? He's tall and lanky, but all he saw, I don't know. So if you're sitting on the toilet, you see his shoes, but you're telling me he's not tall enough to look over the stall? 
No, that would be creepy. That would be Picture terrifying. you doing this slowly and all. Oh, you just see something. That'd be terrifying. <laughs> I'm done. If I've got constipation, <laughs> it's good. I'm good. But he didn't say that though. You see, no, like, he, he didn't. He, he said he saw his shoes and he then he left it at that. Like, dude, look up. And he's not creeped out. He didn't even see his hat. Crazy. I don't know. The hat man. What do you guys think in the comments, man? Maybe you guys he's just a know. friendly neighborhood ghost. You gotta let us know. I've never heard of the hat man. I, I've heard of the hat man before, but not like, I don't know specifically what I remember hearing. I just remember hearing the hat man. Interesting. Yeah. Have you ever seen him? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a guy with a hat in front of me. I'm the hat man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not that tall, though. Yeah. Unfortunately. You're about my height. Yeah. Creepy. Those are the scary stories, guys. Or creepy. Yeah. I like, I, I kind of. Like I said, the goal is to have one big creepy story and then like one kind of small story. To, I, to I didn't calm mind you that. Down. I didn't mind that story. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Again, guys, we do like do, doing these kind of videos. If you have a video, if you have a story that has happened to you, mm -hmm. honestly, we would love to hear it. Put send it in us comment. Comment. No, send it to us on our Instagram, yeah, yeah, and you if you'll that. allow us, we'll share it in a future video and we'll tell your story. All right, guys, we're gonna go to asylum. We'll see you in the next video.